Hello, I'm Marcos Leviathan, and today I'm doing something different from my typical gaming videos. It's going to be me debunking a shit ton of Ken Ham's arguments. Oh, and it's all from when he was with Bill Nye in the Ark Museum. If you don't know what that is, I'll put that up right about now. And what it typically is, is the Creation Museum had another exhibit created just for this. It was another entire museum made to look like the Ark that's filled with nothing but Ark stuff. Yeah, you heard me right. They decided to make an entire Ark just for a museum. Okay, and what Ken Ham did, he invited Bill Nye to come and join him in the Ark. Yeah. And all throughout the entire video, he is just trying to indoctrinate children and that are already indoctrinated, mind you. Um, and then he is already trying to go against Bill Nye every step of the way. Okay, Bill Nye is being very nice and polite about this, and then here's Ken Ham. Okay, you know what, little children? I'm going to basically be a noxious little asshole. Yeah. I don't know even what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm angry. Oh yeah, I'm really, really angry. But let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> uh, it's been two minutes. I've been going on a little rampage. That's how bad this entire video is. I love Bill Nye. He's such a nice guy. And this can ham. Dick. Dick and a half. Like, someone needs to punch him in the face. You know he's doing this all for money. Asshole. <sighs> well, let's jump right into it, shall we? I'm open-minded, but I don't see any evidence for an Ice Age 4,000 years ago. There are pyramids okay. older you know, than 4,000 years people ago. Here. How would you convince them that there were Ice it's Ages actually, over hundreds Mr. of Ham, thousands that's my years? You know that the Ice Age happened very simple. See, there are these things called icebergs. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they destroyed the Titanic because the Titanic decided to ram into it. Yeah, ram right into it, and boom, dead. People died. A lot of people. Okay, but guess what? Icebergs take millions of years to form. And through that, we can test how the oceans were back then, the waters were. Because if you haven't checked, the ocean takes air to the very bottom to make things like the jet stream and things like that, right? And we can tell that by the currents and also the ocean takes in the air through other things like because they merge a little bit, right? The oxygen. So we can tell what was in it just because of the frozen water, how the climate was back then. And that also tells us the temperature back then and also how much certain atoms were there, like oxygen and things like that, certain elements. That's how we can tell that it was happened millions and millions of years ago. And how there have been multiple ice ages, not just one. What you're assuming is that there was just one ice age. No. Oh no. There was more than one. In fact, I don't even know how many, but we have little tiny ice ages as well. And that's how we can tell. That's just one way we can tell that there was an ice age hundreds of thousands of years ago. Anything more, Mr. Kinham? Oh, wait, before you basically say, I'm going to interrupt you over and over and over again, Mr. Nye. I want to say fuck you and fuck everything around you. Okay. Well, continue. I'll, I'll tell you my biggest, biggest concern, that you're teaching generations of these young people that are just animals. 
uh, that they came about by natural processes. Aren't you teaching that humans are animals? Are we animals? Yeah. Mr. Ham, we're animals. If you don't like it, well, guess what? We got a zoo cage just for you because you're not smart enough to belong with the smarter animals known as humans. I don't know what you are. I think you're some weird deformed monkey. But either way, <laughs> Mr. Ham, there are things known as animals in this world, you see. And we can be classified as the, such because we're mammals. And do you know what mammals are? Things with hair. And also things that have the biological traits of mammals. We breathe air. We have similar features to even cats and dogs. Did you know that? We do. We do. We have similar organs than to them. Okay, we have similar bone structures to them. But we don't have similar bone structures to as much as fish and birds. But we still have similar bone structures to them. You know that, right? Because we evolved from the comic, a common ancestor. And our DNA is also very similar to certain fruits and vegetables. Guess what? The banana is a very close relative of yours, according to certain things from DNA. Yeah, it has about, I forget what it's exactly called, but it's certain letters or characters or whatever in DNA that we share with bananas. Yeah, it's a certain number of ant, uh, these numbers, characters. And guess what? Does that matter? No, it does not. Because the chicken has a lot more than we do. It's weird. Yeah. But in either way, we are related to all types of organic life because they came from a common ancestor and we can trace that back through DNA and also through geology. We can trace that back because the further down you go, the more simplistic species get. And the more simplistic species get, the easier it is to tell that they're similar because there's not such a variety and the less types of species there are. Oh, and then we have found <laughs> more, I guess, plant life further down than we have found animal life, you could say. Just because that's more common after a while. That's how insane your argument is. You're saying that we don't come from that just because your book says otherwise. Well, we have found evidence to support our claim. Do you think Darwin all of a sudden said, okay, yeah, I believe in this because fuck God. No. He did not say that. He wanted to believe in this because it supported evidence. Even Darwin said that if these claims aren't true, then guess what? Don't believe in them because he was a scientist. But guess what? They proved to be true. And now they're literally the framework of biology. Without that, that's the first thing that biology teachers teach high school students evolution and if you think that's if you think otherwise you are idiotic Mr. Ham you have shown time and time again that you are not really that intelligent just because of this question you just asked are we animals yes yes we are by every definition we are animals because look around you. What do you classify an animal as? Come on, tell me. What I classify an animal as, personally myself, is something that moves and is organic. And guess what? We move and also breathes oxygen. And guess what we do? We breathe oxygen. So guess what? We're an animal. Very simple, right? Without oxygen, we would die. Without food, we would die. There's a lot of things that make us animals. Okay, Mr. Ham, if you don't like it, well, go kill yourself. I'm, I'm sorry. That's the nicest thing I can say. I'm sorry, Mr. Pouty Face. I'm not a nice guy right now. You really, really shouldn't be saying things that stupid. Okay evidence that, uh, we, as you know, all life is, basically, life is built on DNA. And 
DNA is an information system and a language system. Um, so, do you have any evidence that matter produces a language system, matter produces information? I mean, there, there are billions, trillions of bits of information in living systems. Can you, can you testify to how information arose by natural processes? Here we are. That's it? That's your evidence? Yes, we are his evidence. Want to know why? Because we can trace our DNA back to a common ancestor, which is enough proof that we came about with this all this information. Yeah, that's enough. Can we say that it came about after nothing? But it just shows that DNA came here and it produces itself to this extent. It makes itself into information. Do we know how necessarily? No, we do not know how it came to be, but we do know how that it changes and manipulates itself, so we can see how it evolves. That's why I'm trying to make my argument here, and that's why it's evidence to support our claim that it does. Well, you, and you start with the belief in what? Oh yeah. I, you know, see, what's your belief? See, what see, is your belief? Sir? See, I admit my belief. My belief is that God's word is true, so, and that the history in God's word is true. And see, th what we're talking about here, and this is the whole point that we're helping people understand. We all live in the present. We all have the same present evidence. But depending on your assumptions and how you approach your worldview, depends on how you interpret evidence in relation to the past. Because you believe everything happened by natural process, you don't believe the history in the Bible, right? Or in Genesis. Well, not literally. No. No, I do. Well, and, and, see, and see, that's, that's a big difference. So all I want you to do is admit that you have certain beliefs you start with. My beliefs are based on evidence. I think no, not your belief. Are how, can you, on, how can you prove why I rose by natural processes? How do you prove that? We haven't proven that. Well, then that's a belief. Yes, but the explanation so, so, so that you, you provide is completely unreasonable to me oh, and unacceptable, and, and un we reject un it. Un unreasonable, unreasonable by whom? Unreasonable by the scientific community. You know, the community that teaches and decides what will be te taught in our schools. You know, that community. Yeah, and also the community that does the scientific studies, yeah, that one, yeah, that's the one that it's unreasonable to. Wanna know why it's unreasonable? Okay, see, the reason why we can't say and make th the theory that science, that life evolved from natural processes is very simple. It's because we see that in day to day that things don't arise from supernatural processes like you're saying. We see that things arise from natural processes, not supernatural processes. So guess what? We can't make that absurd claim that you're making right now that life just arose just because God willed it? No, no, that's not how it could have happened, at least from our knowledge of it. So it's hard for us to believe in something like that, but it's easier for us to believe in something that it would be, let's say, uh, this chemical mixed with this chemical in this type of environment would make this type of ribose. Okay, which is a little fraction of DNA, right? Because it's ribose nucleic acid. Uh, but whatever. No, dioxy ribose nucleic acid. Well, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the exact meaning of DNA, but yeah. And I could probably correct myself. Doesn't matter doesn't matter why am I going on a random tangent but back to the subject at subject at hand what you're claiming is very absurd from what we've seen and observed in the universe in our world alone we have never seen something just poof and it was there we have th seen things like in mating how 
the sperm will fertilize the egg and that's how life emerges inside a womb yeah that's how it does it so guess what that's how we learn from our mistakes and learn how that works so guess what that's how we did all this and that's why I make that claim that we arose from natural processes life arose from natural processes not supernatural processes okay does that make sense I hope it does m Mr. Ted no, Ken Ham why do I want to call you Ted Ham Ted Ham I'm thinking of Teddy Graham Crackers and Ham I wonder if that's getting good Graham Crackers and Ham hmm. who cares but now do you understand why it's absurd to us I hope you do if you don't just gonna ignore it anyway. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll just beat myself with a stick. Science. So this is this is the most troubling thing you do, Mr. Ham. Climate change is the most serious problem facing humankind. And so by, uh, int by trying to convince young people that climate change is not real is very serious because they're going to have to grow up and deal with it. Actually, we're saying climate change is real. The Little Ice Age was a local phenomenon. Bill, we're saying climate change is real. So is it serious? Climate change? Yeah. The, the, what you have to do then is say, what, what, why has climate, why have they changed? Climates change all the time. Let me rephrase it for you. Human caused climate change is very serious. Well, there's a lot of this debate is, about that. The there's, a, thing there's, a, there's a lot of scientists who would disagree with that. In fact, we have very, PhD very scientists on our staff that would disagree with that. We have other PhD scientists. Those, your scientists and your staff, as respectful as I can be, are incompetent. You mean, not good scientists. Oh, you mean Dr. Nathaniel? Climate change is real. And I don't know about your scientists at all. I can only speak for the scientists of the scientific community. And they are scientists of the scientific community, definitely. But the, I can only speak about the broader range, which the broader range majority says climate change is real. And do you know what? I believe them because about 90% say that. Yes, it has been the case where like 90% of scientists believe this and then was proven wrong. But guess what? This one has so much evidence to back it up. Yeah, guess what? That one little thing you don't like to hear, evidence. Yeah, I'm sorry that that word hurts your ears. But guess what? Again, we have so much evidence to support climate change is real that it's astounding, actually. Extremely astounding. I'm not saying that climate change is the biggest problem that we're facing right now or that we should be fearing it as much as some people are I'm not saying that or anything like that what I'm saying is it's real and it's made by men and we can do something about it to stop it so we should do something to stop it if we can slow it down we should slow it down let it take its course don't make it change how it's already changes and we are making a change by doing the things that we are doing. So, we should take those precautions. But what you and your staff of scientists says is that climate change is not made by man. It's made by nature. Yeah, guess what? If you go back on nature and go... I mean, if you go back through history and climate history, you can see that it fluctuates up and down, up and down, up and down. Guess what? What we're doing right now is going to make it unnaturally go up and down. But it's going to just keep going up until we become too hot and we burn alive and become cooked in our own planet. Do you understand that? 
Hope you do. You need to realize that. It's not a good thing. I'm not saying that your beliefs... I'm not trying to challenge your beliefs or anything. I'm sorry. Even I don't believe in them at all. I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't. I've said that multiple times. I hope, I hope it's very clear. Anyway. But guess what? We can't prove that climate change is not happening. Okay. Anything more? Okay. Thanks, Ken Ham, for your time. As you guys can see, this entire video so far has been horrible. Horrendous arguments and stupid claims. But this is only the first part of it. I mean, I only did a fraction of the beginning clips. They got worse as it progressed. He started really trying to mute Bill Nye, and if I get positive feedback on this video, I'll probably make a part two to this. And from what I've seen of the clips and what I've watched, he makes more stupid claims, more stupid arguments, and Bill Nye's nice and doesn't yell at him even though if I was in this situation I would probably punch him in the face and throw him across the room but who cares about that but we can prove everything I stated in this video I might not have the degree or the education to back this up but I know other people that do that I've seen and I, that's where I get all my information from so if you want to argue this against me, if you're a creationist, do so. But what I argue for you to do is research. I used to be a creationist from a real young age. And guess what? I looked up the research and this is what happened. I became an atheist because of it. Okay. So... The research shows that it's most likely no God. Most likely there's no God. I'm sorry. And there's nothing that's going to happen after you die or anything like that. But on that note, I want to say thank you for watching. I've been Marcus Leviathan. And this is my first part in, uh, I guess, Hopefully only a three-part series. Maybe longer if I really have to go on this. Of de debating and destroying Ken Ham's arguments. I haven't made a title for it yet. But I will. And thank you for watching. I know it's different from my typical stuff. For my typical viewer base. But hopefully... People watch and enjoy. Thank you. See you later.